Well, we're back with the gaffer, Steve Evans. Um, gaffer, you spoke to me on, on Monday. You said, Phil, can you get the, the fans to send him some questions for me to address towards the end of the week? They've been coming in via Twitter and Facebook. So without further ado, I'll put some to you. Um, before I start, obviously, we couldn't ask them all. It's been 50, 60 questions. So I've just tried to um, get the main ones and not to replicate any. And some of your answers will be in the interview that um, you did earlier in the week, which will be on YouTube. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll go through it quite quickly and get as many as we can. We will do. So let's start with um, the Twitter questions. And the first one I've got is from Nick. And Nick asks you, at last summer's Q&A, you were very open about where we needed to strengthen and what you thought our weaknesses were. And he thought you got it spot on. Can you be as candid this summer? What are the main focus areas? I think it, I think it's probably more of a general this time, Nick. It's a good question from Nick, but it's more of a general in the sense that we really have nine players, two of which are goalkeepers and two of which I've said. Lee Hudson's in touch with um, St Mirren. And I've said a bit, a bit Barry wouldn't have been here, but he is here and you'll be great with that respect. Where do I think we need to strengthen? I think we need to strengthen in the right fullback position. And, and thereafter, I think we're, we're very good central defensively, particularly if your captain stays. If you don't stay, you know, well, we're already going to send our centre back anyway, but I already have someone that will be coming in on loan. Um, but if your captain stays, he'd be superb for us. And then I think there on him, we need, we need a lot of creativity, certainly in the wider areas. Um, and we've never hidden it. We need, to, we need to strengthen the top end of the pitch. So our defensive record was outstanding. And the frustrating thing last season was we would dominate a lot and draw a game. Dominate a lot, draw a game. You know, when we're in a way, dominate a game totally, lose 1 0. Miss a few chances, probably don't be as creative as we should be. So, probably from a more attacking side, more creativity in the field, probably a little bit more play on in, in the wide positions. And that's assuming if we keep who we've who we already got. Lovely. And uh, Nick, thank you for your question there. Um, next question is from Dan. And Dan asks, would you like to sign some of the players that we had on loan last season? Yeah, I think, again, I'm, I'm on record as saying it. The two Southampton boys were, were outstanding. Um, obviously, I've had, a, I've, I've had a chat with Southampton. Alfie did great. Tommy did great. There, there may be a thought process can and, and should they play higher. I suppose that will depend on demand. Um, I loved working with both Jordans, Jordan Graham and Jordan Roberts, all playing with both of them. And it's because they're a different market now, they're no longer attached to their club, so they're free agents. So it's going to be about when it comes to those lads, as I already took base with them, it's going to be about where the values are versus the values that we have to keep within the squad. Because the dressing room does not have a big earn, it doesn't have a big boy. Going to Kindy found that out. He had to come and fit into a wage structure or not come at all. So if they come into the jail, they have to come and fit within their structure. Absolutely. Um, next question is from Warren. And Warren says, uh, we want you to stay. Have you and Paul Rayner, or all Paul Rayner, had any talks with the chairman about extending your contracts beyond next summer? Uh, no, we've not, is the honest answer. Um, obviously, the chairman's aware there's been, there's been interest in myself and Paul, as you know, both in January and since the yep. lockdown or the end of the season come. We said to our chairman, our commitment is to the football club. It stays that way. Um, Listen, the, the first time my manager has to go and ask the chairman if he's, if he's looking to extend his contract, then he's in trouble, isn't it? The club have to come to me. But there's been no talk of it. In fairness, our chairman has been, and I can't support it not, he's, he's working 18, 19 hours a day. I get phone calls and emails and texts from our chairman. We've asked for I'm in bed 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night, and half past five in the morning when he's back up and he's working. I'm normally travelling if I'm going down to the jail. Um, so, um, so, so the answer to that is, is a straight no. Um, just on the chairman, uh, Gaffer, it won't go unnoticed from you that um, he's been at the club 25 years. A, a quite incredible achievement. Just give us a few words on, um, on how special a milestone that is to achieve as a, as a football club owner in, in the current era. I think, I think it's incredible. I think all too often we hear about people in football doing a good job. We hear people in football talk about loyalty. And, um, and Paul Scully's delivered both of them, I think, to be the longest serving chairman in the EFL. And when it became public knowledge via yourself and the national media, I was actually privy to be in his home, to be in his office and be in his car at different times when some real serious people in the Premier League level and Championship level were on the phone to him. 
senior people, I mean club owners, that are not often heard or seen in the media, club chairman, chief executives congratulating managers, high profile managers. And um, but he's he's not only been there twenty five years and and done through longevity, he's done a outstanding job, always been able to pay the players, never put the club at the forefront of financial troubles, although he'd be the first to say it gets tight at times because it's it's a real fight as it is for every football club. But yeah, you know, congratulations to our chairman and he's he's certainly a man I've got to know a lot more in the last nine, ten months and I'm I'm better for knowing Paul Stelly for sure. Excellent. Question from Alex. Alex asks you, what are your realistic aims for next season? I think realistically, I've always gone into a football club and believed whatever I took it in the first season, I could improve it on the second season. And I don't think I've had a club that I've not done that. If I look at when I went into to a way back, it, you know, starting my career all the way through my career, to get in at least to come out, I've, I've, I've finished it higher. Even at Peterborough, I think I went in to be fair, I think you were high up as well. They were eight or nine, but we, we finished, I come out and say. Um, so the answer is we finished 10. I think we'd have finished higher than that. So I think the fans will be like me this time. There'll be more expectation that we can get in the playoffs this time. We can get in there rather than maybe just be on the fringes of it. A lot of the time we can get in it now. We, we finished 10th on merit. We've left one or two big clubs behind us. We were in the shot tails of one or two other bigger clubs. Remarkable for what the results are. Our chairman made a wonderful comment the other day, Phil. The resources are what we can afford. And that's why I fear for some clubs. And I'm looking at the losses being around around football. It's just, as the chairman of the Football League said on Sky Sports a couple of days ago, some of these, most, not, not even some, most of these models are not sustainable if they want to have football club. As it is. Yes, absolutely. Um, next question is from Luke. Um, I think I asked you this last week, but he's put it in a slightly different way. Do, do you think this will be your hardest challenge in football, given the fact the small budget we have may be made smaller due to the current pandemic? Well, it's a, again, it's, a, it's an excellent question. But the answer is, yes, our well, budget will be smaller and less, which I never thought was possible, but it, but it will be. Uh, but so, will other, so will other football clubs that are doing it well. You know, we, we're never going to put ourselves in the marketplace to compete for a player when it comes to finance with a, with a Sunderland, with a Portsmouth, with an Ipswich, looking at who may come down. And I'm not second-guessing it. Maybe a Barnsley, maybe a Charlton, maybe a Hull, maybe a Luton, you know, maybe a Wigan. These will be vastly more resource. Maybe a Oxford, maybe a Fleetwood, maybe a Wick. So we, we know we're not going to be in some of those brackets. But we, we, we believe we're trying to come up with a point of difference this year. We said we'd like the younger team on the pitch. I mean, our review last season, were better players for me, but our younger players, I think the two, the two or three standout performers, certainly the likes of Ogilvy and Tucker and, and Bonham. And, you know, beyond that, you looked at Alfie Jones, you looked at Tommy, you know, you looked at Brandon, these were the, you know, you looked at Mika, these were the star performers. That, that was the younger age group. Max, of course, being against the rule, if you like, being in with the top 30. So, so from that point of view, uh, the expectation for us uh, inside the dressing room will be the players. Darren Chandler is our next question. And he asks, given Matty Willock's stop-start season last time around, what sort of impact do you envisage Matty having next season? Well, I think first and foremost, I've, I've probably watched that kid walking off the training ground in tier three or four times over the last nine months. And it's so sad to see because... Prior to walking off, we've been watching him in training and watching him in park games being absolutely sensational. He is a top, top talent. But players have seasons like that. We've seen the best players have seasons where they, they pick up niggle after niggle and they can't seem to get going. Uh, Matty is a top, top talent. Matt, Matty is, Matty could play for any team in the league. doesn't matter whether you're getting relegated and get from the championship now, he could play in those teams. He's a top, top player. He's, He's been doing some running. He's been sending me some texts with the stats on it. And, and they're outstanding. We, we just need to get him on the pitch. And immediately in a key area in football, we improve dramatically. Thank you for that. And the next question is from David. And David asks, last season defensively, we were very effective. We didn't suffer as many defeats as we had in previous campaigns, but we still weren't winning enough games to maybe seriously challenge for promotion. What needs to be done, in your view, to turn more draws into wins? 
I think I've answered it in the, in the little video that you may see before these questions are answered. Because I think they, without a doubt, more creativity and more ruthless in the box. You know, um, we often got frustrated. We did a lot of possession. We, we were probably one of the top teams in the league in possession, high tempo football. And then we just didn't unlock the door, maybe or as sharp as we should have done. Uh, so we need to do that a lot better. And, and we need to take a chance more than we've done before. Like, countless points we've given away by watching us dominate and, and go home with a point and go home with nothing. So but from that point of view, defensively, we were, we were very strong. And, um, you know, and that just doesn't come from the back four and the goalkeeper. That comes from the unit. But we weren't as lethal going forward. And sadly, the boys at the back. And they chipped in with a few goals. They can't really affect the front as good as the front boys can affect the back. Cool. Your answer just answered a, uh, a few other questions, so I'm going to skip forward a couple. Um, okay. This next one is from Ollie. And Ollie asks, how do you think the league will look next year if we have to start behind closed doors? Do you think clubs will have smaller squads to keep their budgets down and in doing so, play more youngsters? I think both. I think you ever can remember the question, if that was, was an excellent question, I think. I think certainly from our point of view, we, we won't be smaller because... People can look at what our squad size was, 15 signed full-time first team players and five loan players, that was our squad. And, and Joe Walsh was included in that. So we'll be at the same number, but we'll certainly be younger. Um, you know, we're looking, you know, we announced a few weeks ago that none of the youth team players had actually made the cup. Well, I've, I've been, I was thinking a lot about it in the last week or two and went back over some, some video analysis we got from the youth and, and young Toby Bancroft has been brought back in and given a third year scholarship. So he'll be coming in almost as a young professional in the season. Because at the end of the season, he was very close to making his debut. I kept going back to it. And I kept going back to it. So we got the footage back out and we, we assessed it. So it's brilliant, sadly, for the other boys, they've, they've been gone. But the young Toby I, I called him up and, and said, This is what we want to do. And the head of youth was on the phone to his parents and they're absolutely delighted. And, uh, so we're looking forward to it. And he's, he has a chance of getting good at it. He's a different position to Tucker. He's a wide at a 10. Um, but he's, got, he's a bit like Tucker. He's got a chance. Well, that's good news. Thanks for that, Gaffer. Um, and thanks to Ollie for that question. Uh, the next question is from uh, Roop Smith. And Roop asks, what have you personally and the club in general learnt during this pandemic that you will be able to use or apply in the future running of the football club? I think everyone in the, in the world they would look at hygiene for a start. And I'm not talking about personal hygiene. We all shower, we all have baths, we all look after our teeth and all the stuff we do. I think just in, in terms of personal hygiene, uh, get out of the fresh air as often as you can, continue to wash my hands. I think the first few weeks my hands were sore because I'm always going to washing them. I think talked to a lot of people who are like that. Um, I think just to be more, more attentive uh, as a manager, just to be more, make sure that the sports science team and the healthy guys and the departments are medical, etc., and the dressing rooms are all really ruthlessly clean, but we all do at home. So that would be the big thing from a hygiene point of view and a medical point of view. Uh, and the other, the other side is the care for who you kiss. Yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> um, thanks for that. The next question is from Jamie. And Jamie asks, ideally, how many permanent signings are you looking to make? I think in, a, in an ideal world, we'll be another eight or nine permanent signings. Um, and then we'll top it off with the loans. If we're, if we're assuming now we have seven, eight first team squad players, which two of them are goalkeepers, then those numbers balance. So, seven or eight, I've had chats with we, four of them already, four to contact over the well, six to contact over the weekend, because not everyone will want to come and talk to you. So, it works. Some people might say, oh, No, I've got made a great offer, I'm happy in this part of the world, too far away as Ken from where I am, etc. Um, but, you know, I'll certainly aim to be speaking to the four players over Monday or Tuesday and showing them the facilities, showing them Priestfield, some wonderful facilities in Priestfield, as you know. We're one of those clubs. We've got hydrotherapy, swimming pools, we've got saunas. I've come back on, I went off because my battery's going, guys. No um, worries. Yeah, so steam rooms, etc. So the, so the players have really good facility. Training pitch is nice. So I don't know what I've answered it now. Seven and eight permanents. And then obviously we'll, have, we'll use the maximum loans, five loans. We've actually only got two more, so your battery might just last. Um, okay. Mark has asked, can you see Joe Walsh being part of the first team squad as often next season? 
or are you looking to get him out on loan for some regular first team games? Good question, very quick answer. Joe will come back in pre season. He will compete game for game, I show in pre season with, with, with Jack Bonham. If Joe, if Joe is uh, in front of Jack, he plays. If he's behind Jack, we are thinking of loaning Joe out if he's behind him. I think it's game on. Joe Walsh was really, really improving at the end of the season. Thanks to Simon, thanks to Jack Bonham, who's been brilliant with Joe. I'm, I had Joe in the office just over a week ago. He's matured, he's grown, and the things we grow. He's bending down to bend the door, he's stronger. He's been working hard, he's been working on his hands. I think the kid's got a chance to start to you know. As you say, game on then. That'll be, that'll be interesting. Yeah. Because Bonham last season made everyone forget Thomas Holiday. Uh, Thomas Holly, and that was superb. Yeah, and a fantastic season. You're absolutely correct. Um, and the last question before your battery dies on a scaff uh, is from Nigel. He asks, what do you feel is the biggest change you have made at the club since you've been here and why? The biggest change, I think first and foremost, we've got better players. I think we've got better players in. And I think that will we'll move forward. We'll, we'll find better players again. But I think forget if you, if you forget that side of it and only supporters and and not all odds of watch the game can judge that. I think there's now an infrastructure that, that wasn't there before. There's now a model for the players to follow. There's now guidelines for them to follow. Um, I'm very into making sure the boys have the best facilities possible. So the training pitches will, will improve the bonnet man systems. Um, the training programmes, we think, are, are more akin to being individualistic as well as team member. Um, so I, I would think the overall packages they've got a lot better in most areas. We certainly know what we got in any area. When people look and say, well, it's, why am I saying that? Because that's what the likes of Amir is telling me. That's what the likes of Bonham is telling me. That's the likes of Barry Fuller is telling me. It's the likes of Brandon saying the club is a different place to be. And um, that's not just credit to myself. It's massive, massive credit to Paul Rayner, to James Russell, and, and ultimately to our chairman, because he has to fund it. Because I'm, I'm always scrapping for better balls, better training facilities, better travel, better health. And um, it's my job to ask, it's not my job to fund, it's my job to ask and give reason as to why our chairman should, should open the post strings a little bit to improve things. But I can tell you now, during last season, at key periods when the chairman come and watch the work we were doing with the players, when they come and see a certain parts of the infrastructure, even he got excited and said, it's the best as purest. And they put the battles in the path. It's the best as purest in terms of how everything's done. My argument for him is it's better than what it is. Yeah. Only, I now need, I now need the results of Tony Pulitzer. <laughs> well, well, Tony was there quite a long time. He was there five years, so uh, you're only a fifth of the way through your stint. Yeah. I think it's a key thing, though. I think we tried to do in one and a half transfer windows. I come in quite late in the summer period. Not, I come in, I think it was June, mid-June. June, yeah, before. mid-June, yeah. Yeah. So before, I, and people can guess, and, and they'll guess wrongly, that it was done in April and May. Far from it, I've probably gone somewhere else in April. Well, um, and then we had the January window, and it's a difficult window, January. But you're right, as it took Tony, I did realise it took Tony to five years, which in today's world would be 10 transfer windows, if you like. And I've looked at managers that have been around clubs. You know, Lee Johnson is a friend of mine, he lost his job at Bristol City. I think it was four or five years, probably eight or nine mm-hmm. windows. So probably looking, we never got promotion. I think it was really unlucky. But in saying that, Listen, if I get eight windows, which I don't expect Paul Scully to give me eight windows, but if I get eight windows, we'll be in the championship. Before someone corrects me, I think Tony was four years, so um, I'll correct myself before I leave you. Well, but, um, well in Tony's case, there was no windows, wasn't there? Would it be great if there was no transfer windows? Absolutely fantastic. Because, because I'll reduce it from, uh, from the ten windows. And if there's no windows, we'll be in two, three years, we'll be in the championship. Superb. Gaffer, thanks very much for your time. Um, have a nice weekend and we'll perhaps catch up with you uh, this time next week. And my message to Joe's fans, Phil, doesn't, doesn't stop. I've been around St. Mary's this week. They've been around me. I've been stopping it again, doing supermarket shopping. I'm even getting identified behind a mask. It's incredible. I suppose they see on the T-shirt, Jim. Yeah, here, but I'm and, and the badge. Yeah. And, the, and the badge. Um, but they've been fantastic. But, but more importantly, they'll say to them all, uh, especially the elder generation, Stay safe, you know, um, do your best you can to make sure that we've seen this virus away. And, all, and I, for one, really, really look forward to more than them when we go back into the pre-field. Not the other way about, 
because what I've seen commitment and passion from people around the stadium in the past three weeks is very humble, very humble. Lovely. Gaffer, thanks very much for your time and um, we'll speak to you soon. Thank you. Stay safe too. Thanks, Joe. Take care. Cheers, Gaffer.